Welcome back to Get Google Ready for 2024. And in this lesson, I'm gonna be taking you through the correct step-by-step -step process in how to set up a Performance Max campaign. Now to start, I wanna firstly take you through the very important question of who should actually be using Performance Max campaigns in 2024. Now, as you may very well be aware that Performance Max campaigns can be used for both e-commerce businesses and also service-based businesses. And the reason for that is because Performance Max campaigns appear on all of the available channels for marketing. So that includes search, display, Gmail, maps, also the discovery network and YouTube. With the only difference being that if you are an e-commerce business, you can also connect your Google Merchant Center and your shopping feed so that you can also show your ads on the shopping feed within that one Performance Max campaign. Now, before you delve into the world of Performance Max, it's highly important that you understand that Performance Max was built by Google in order to generate and increase the number of conversions. So this means a couple of things. And the first thing is, is that I wouldn't be starting a Performance Max campaign as a lead off campaign. I'm still very much using either search or shopping. And the reason for that is because before you start a Performance Max campaign, it's best practice that it is operating in an account that already is generating at least 30 conversions over a 30 day period. So you're getting at least one conversion a day. And I would also make a note that those conversions are better to be endpoint conversions. So what we mean by that is that they are actually confirmed transactions inquiries through a form submission or through phone calls. And I would not be including things like add to cart or even view product pages as a conversion action in those 30. And then secondly, you need to be able to set a budget for a Performance Max campaign that it can once again achieve those 30 conversions at a minimum. So what that would mean is that within your account, if you've got an average cost per conversion of $20, you would be needing to set your budget at at least $20, more is better, but at least $20, which would then mean that you would need a budget of at least $600 a month. So if you don't have those conditions in place, it may be better to persist with your search or shopping before you delve into the world of Performance Max. Now, I'm definitely not saying that this doesn't mean that you can't start with Performance Max, but in my own testing that I have done is that it can take quite a while and sometimes up to three to four months. And in some of the situations that I found, even an investment of up to seven and a half to $10,000 before you started to see a return with starting off with a Performance Max campaign. So yes, it can be done, but it does take longer. And the reason for that is because Performance Max is heavily geared towards targeting audiences that are converting. So even though you do have some keyword metrics that you can insert into Performance Max, it does heavily leverage off audience targeting. So if Google doesn't first have a very clear picture of the audiences and the demographics and the locations and the devices that better convert for your business, it has to undergo a whole heap of testing before it can really hone in on the highest converting audiences for your business. And the other thing that I do wanna make a note for is that while you can set Performance Max to, to target more new customers, it does tend to leverage towards brand. And the reason for that is because Obviously, if people have seen your ad initially through either display or Gmail ad, and then they actually go through and complete a branded search term, your ad will appear. So that's just something that's important to note. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just something you need to keep an eye on. And then finally, before I take you through the correct structure that you should be using for Performance Max, and then also that step-by-step -step process, I did wanna let you know that another thing that you do need to watch out for Performance Max, and this is especially true if you have some different types of product categories that don't have much bleed over. So for example, if you're a pet store and you've got dog products and you've also got bird products, or if you've got a scenario where you've got thousands and thousands of different products, what can happen is that if you've got all of those different product categories and all of those products in the same campaign, very quickly, Performance Max can really favor one of those product categories. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what can happen is, using that example of dog and, and bird products, you might have a situation where your dog products are getting a lot more spend, but your bird products have a much higher conversion rate and a, a better ROAS. So in those situations, you do have to watch out and you may have to break out your Performance Max campaigns into different campaigns, not different asset groups. And the reason for that is so that you can have better control over your budgets. So 
With all of that said, let's now jump into a screen share so I can take you through the structure. And that is gonna be a structure I'm gonna show you for uh, e-commerce and also a service-based business. And then I'll take you through that step-by-step -step process and how to set up your Performance Max campaigns correctly in 2024. Now, if you do miss any of these steps, I don't want you to stress because if you follow that link in the description below, you can download a free copy of my Performance Max campaign setup guide. So with all that said, let's get straight into this process. So what I wanna do firstly now is I wanna take you through the quick setup of what we've got for our Performance Max campaigns in both a service-based campaign and also an e-commerce-based campaign. So this one is firstly for a business where we're looking at generating more inquiries. And the way that we've got this is that you can see through here when we look at the website, when we're promoting our Seminac Villas, we've got one bedroom and two bedroom Seminac Villas. And what we've done is that when we go into the campaigns and into the asset groups, you can see here that we've got our campaign to follow the same structure as our website. Now, the benefit of that is that we've then got this first asset group, which is targeting our one bedroom villas, which is this page in here. And then we've got the second asset group, which is targeting our two bedroom villas. And that's one thing that regardless of whether you are doing a service-based campaign or a e-commerce campaign, is that you would want your campaign and your asset group structure to follow your website. And what I wanna show you in through here, say for example, in a e-commerce campaign, you can see through here, we've got one campaign with our different asset groups and then we've got baby earmuffs, audio headphones and kids earmuffs. When you see the website, you can see here, we've got baby, kids and audio, which is the three categories we're targeting in this campaign. Now the benefit of this is that for both a service-based and e-commerce business, what you can do is when you go into this table view, and we'll go through this one to show you how to optimize your campaigns, you can go through and check to see if there's any of these categories which are underperforming, so they may have like a really low cost per conversion, or if you get the situation where you have an asset group which is taking all of the spend, it doesn't have as high a conversion rates as the other campaigns. So if you see through here, these are the two asset groups where we're getting most of the results. And you can actually see they also got the highest ROAS in that conversion value cost. So what we could do is if we wanted to, for example, this other product, if we wanted to, we could pull that out into another asset group, but because the results are okay and it's fairly closely aligned, so it'd be really hard to break that out and split out the search traffic, we've kept it in the same campaign at the moment. All right, so with all that said, let's now jump into how to set up a new Performance Max campaign. And what you wanna do is that when you're in the main dashboard section and whether you're in the old dashboard, so this is the one you would then choose new campaign, or if you are in the new dashboard, once again, you can just go over to here and press create and we wanna go new campaign. Now, what I am gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing this setup in an e-commerce based account. And the reason for that is so that I can also go through and show people how to add in the merchant center. The steps are exactly the same if you're doing a service-based business, it's just that you won't add in the shopping feed. So you need to first make the decision whether we're doing this by sales or leads. If you're e-commerce, choose sales. If you're a service-based, you can do leads. Although having said that, if you are a service-based business and you do also have conversion values, I would still go down the sales path. So for this one, we'll go down sales. And then in here, once again, because we are using this in a mature campaign, like I said at the start of the video, you wouldn't be using this for a brand new campaign. So you'd already have that conversion data in there because we're wanting to see 30 conversions in 30 days. If you've got some other conversion actions, like say for example, if it's e-commerce and you don't want to track phone calls, what you can do is remove the goal. I'm not going to remove this one, but what that does is that removes the goal from the campaign bidding, but it doesn't remove the goal from the account. So that's a good thing. So you just basically saying we only want to focus on these conversion actions within this campaign. Then we go through and click continue. We are going to select performance max and then straight away you'll see your shopping feed come in here. As I said before, if you are not a e-commerce brand and you don't have a shopping feed set up, you won't have this option and then it goes through to the campaign name. Now, I am very, very big on having a naming convention so you know exactly what you're gonna be targeting in that campaign. If you've got like, you know, sales performance max 16, you don't really know what this is about. This naming convention is something that only you see. So all you wanna do is you wanna make it 
a name that understands for you. So we're just gonna go, for example, sales products, and we'll just write 24. Go through and click continue. And then from there, it's just a process of going through these steps. This is quite a straightforward process. And the reason for that is because you can see over here, Google will build out what we're gonna be doing, starting a bidding. You know, go into campaign settings and budget. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose conversion value. Now I would not start with a target ROAS straight away. So you can add that in. The reason why I wouldn't start that is because we don't know how this campaign is gonna perform. And I would generally be waiting at least 90 days before we look to even start a target ROAS. And then from there, if you wanted to, you can choose this option, whether you wanna optimize it for acquiring new customers. The only thing I would say for that is that you do need to make sure that you've got a, an existing customer list on there. So what that would mean is that you would once again have to have this in a mature account where you've already loaded in your converting audiences or Google knows who those converting audiences are. So then by optimizing for acquiring new customers, what you're doing is you're saying to Google, don't target these people. So then we go through and click next. Then we wanna make a decision on what countries we're going to target. In most cases, I will target countries individually or similar countries. So let's just say you're an e-commerce brand based in Europe or the United States and you wanted to target Australia and New Zealand, it would be okay to target those two together. But the main thing is, is that you want to be targeting countries that have similar attributes and you know, obviously similar languages and also that you know have similar similarities in their search profiles. So for this one, we're just going to select Australia. And then from here, you'll see this section in here where it says automatically created assets. Now, I do recommend to keep this active. So if you are in a business or an industry niche that has a lot of regulation around ad copy and what keywords your ads can appear for, to be honest, Performance Max isn't for you. Now, the reason for why this is beneficial is because Performance Max is such an automated campaign, I found better results with keeping this on. The only thing that I would say is that if you say that example I gave before, and we found out that we want to split these two themes into a separate campaign. So one bedroom villas in one campaign, two bedroom villas in the other. What we would do is in the one bedroom villa account, what we would do, is that you would go through and you would add in an exclusion. So by adding that in, what we're doing is we're saying that if this campaign was only doing one bedroom villas, we would be saying don't target anything about a two bedroom villa. So that would be the only thing that say, if you are gonna create multiple performance max campaigns, you do wanna use this exclusion URL option. And then from there, we wanna go through and click on next. Once again, when it comes to the asset group name, keep a strong naming convention. So for example, we would write you know product A, or product B, whatever the product name is. So if you were selling men's t-shirts, you would write it as men's t-shirts. And now this is where you do need to make the decision around your products. So what I generally do want to do here as well is that I wanna go through and add some different product segmentation. And the reason for that is even if everything is going into one asset group at the same time, this then at least allows me to see the results when we go into the listing group. So if we're seeing some underperforming list product categories, we can then either exclude them or bring them out into another campaign. Now, because this brand only has 26 products, we're just gonna include all of the 26 items. If it was a campaign that had you know hundreds or thousands of different products, products, what I would usually do is I'd break this down by the product type. You may even have some custom labels or the different brand if you're selling other people's brands. Go through and click save. And then from there, we want to create the URL. Now for here, what we have said is that you would remember the structure, you would want to send this to the most relevant URL. Now Performance Max will use other URLs, but this may not be the homepage. So if you, once again, going back to that example, the one bedroom villa Seminyak, we set the asset group to one bedroom villa and then in the two bedroom villa, up as a group, we set that to the two bedroom villa page. For the example for e-commerce, where we had the baby headphones, the audio headphones, and the kids headphones, we would have those three asset groups and they're going to the individual URLs. So baby asset group goes to baby headphones, the kids asset group goes to kids headphones. Now from here, it's just a straightforward process. You can go through and add your images. What you can do is you can upload these if you want, or if you want to as well, you can put in your URL and Google will collect it. Now, because we've already got some images, in here, I'm just gonna really quickly select some, but that's the process of going through and adding in your ad copy. Same with the logos, you add in your logo. And then same with the video, you can add in a YouTube uh, URL if you've got one. Or if you wanted to, you can create your own ad. To be honest with you, I would use a YouTube video. If you don't have one, it is okay to leave blank. And the reason for that is because, especially for e-commerce brands, after the first, generally about six to seven weeks, you're gonna find that the spend on YouTube is gonna be really, really low. We've run some external scripts and generally the YouTube spend is about one or 2%. Then from there, you just go through and add in your headlines. Now, if you've gone through this series, you know that I strongly recommend 
recommend that you already have your keyword research and your ad copy. So generally what I do is I have my ad copy sheet ready to go and I'm just copying this over. But for this example, we'll just add in some extra headlines. And you can have up to 15 headlines and you can also have up to five long headlines. But as I said, just for the purpose of this example, we're just gonna add in the minimum amount. You can also go through and add in your site links, which if you watch the search video, you know that these are the little ads with little uh, menu items that appear below the ad. If you wanted to add in some more asset types, so call extensions or call outs, you can do that here. And that's how we go through and create our ads. And then I wanna bring you down to this signals. Now, this has just recently changed. And what Google has done is that it's added in what it calls its search themes. And as Google says here, what are some words or phrases people use when searching for your products or services? So generally what I would be using in here is remembering that for Performance Max, we're starting this after we've got a campaign that has been converting. So I would go back into my search campaign or my shopping campaign, go in to the search terms and add in keyword search terms that have been converting. So for this one, I know that things like buy baby headphones has been converting for us. Now, I do also recommend that you add up to 25. So I would be adding as many as possible because the more data you can give Google here, the quicker you're gonna be getting your results. And then it comes into adding in the audience signals. Now, remember what I said that performance max campaigns don't just focus on keywords, it also focuses on audiences. So once again, what you wanna be doing is you wanna be going back into your search campaign campaigns or your shopping campaigns, reviewing the audiences that are converting and then adding them in here. So firstly, what you wanna be doing is you do wanna be going through and adding in all of your data. So you can see in here, even if they haven't converted, the reason why we want to be adding them is because by adding the ones that even don't convert, it's giving Google an idea of who converts and who doesn't convert. So we add them and then in the additional signals with the interest and detailed demographics, this is where you add in your top performing audiences from your campaign. So I would go to my search or shopping campaign and add them in here. I know for this one, because this is a baby product, we get a lot of conversions from parents. So I'll just add these in. We've also got a list of about another 20 audiences that we know convert for this brand. So as I said, you wanna be adding in as many audiences as you can. You can add up to 100, but once again, you wanna be adding only audiences that are converting. So don't just add the 100 because you can, add the audiences that are converting. Remembering that generally we're starting Performance Max after we've had con high conversions search and shopping campaigns. And that's where we're getting that data. Then additional signals. If you've got some really clear demographics around who buys your products, add them in. If you're unsure, I would just keep that blank. And then what you can do is if you wanted to add in an audience name, what this does is this saves this data. So this collection of demographics, detailed demographics and our data and our search themes, it saves it so you can attach it to other campaigns if you wanted to. And we're just gonna write sales 24. Then from there, you go through and click next. Now Google is giving some recommendation of a recommended budget, but we know for this one, the Cost per conversion was $10, so we're gonna set it at $30. And then from there, we go through to next. And then what happens from there, Google goes through and it runs a check. And then once Google has finished all of those checks, you can then go through and click publish, and then you have your Performance Max campaign set up. So once again, if you've missed any of those steps or you wanna download my Performance Max campaign setup guide so you can follow through those steps in that campaign setup guide book that I've prepared for you, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young and I'm from Define Digital Academy. And if you wanna stay up to date for whenever I release any new videos, especially these new videos in my Get Google Ready playlist for 2024, all you need to do is not only subscribe, but also make sure you turn on that notification bell. Once again, thank you for joining me. See you next time.